Well, welcome to the Slowpoke World, and I guess you could argue that Darkbox is one of my pet decks here on the channel. It's featured a bunch of times, and I actually think it gets better with Rebel Clash coming out. A couple new additions that's going to put you over the top and take some wins, okay? Sound good? Let's have a look at the list. Before we get into the list though guys, if you're part of the 60% of people that watch these videos and aren't subscribed, do yourself a favour, hit that subscribe button, I put a new TCG video out at least once a day, okay? Right, let's get into the list. Right, so like I was saying earlier, um, Darkbox is a deck that I love, um, and I think obviously with Dragapult coming out as a big metaphor right now, this only gets better, but slapping out for weakness is always fun. Um, and as more and more VMAX decks come out, like Toxicity, potentially Rillaboom as well. Um, being able to just power moon them and kill them and stop them dead in their tracks is always fun. Let's have a look. So, obviously Dark Box um, as a whole revolves around uh, Revile GX, Stage 1 uh, Pokemon 200 HP with the ability Shadow Connection, actually you move around your Dark Energies as much as you like in the turn, which is nice. Um, on face value, these, these abilities tend to normally be good, but with the host of Dark Attackers that we now have, it's just really, really nice. Um, it has an attack 3 for 130, he never really used it. And nocturnal maneuvers. Um, it search your deck for any number of basic Pokemon, put them on your bench. Now, this deck has so many nutty um, GX attacks uh, available to it. You don't really want to be using nocturnal maneuvers, so uh, we'll try our hardest not to use that. Okay. Um, I say the main reason why I think this deck is really good is because of Umbreon Darkroy tag team Pokemon 270 HP, two attacks, Black Lance, the first one for uh, two dark, one colors. Does 150. And a 60 snipe to one of your opponents, benched EX or GX. Funnily enough, now Black Lance, when it first came out, was a two shot on everything and he helps at the bench up, which is nice. But um, now, <laughs> uh, it's not that great, Black Lance, it's not that great. Uh, setting up the Den 8 is kind of cool. We'll get to the, what you can set up with in a minute, but the 60 snipe on the bench is, can come up. Um, but Pale, the Dark Moon, sorry, is the real reason why we play this deck. Um, for one energy, you stop your opponent playing trainer cards. Again, we've got so many good jet attacks are, uh, available to us. If we're having to use it just for one energy, I mean, it, granted, it probably buys us a couple turns, but it's not the greatest. However, if you attach another five energies uh, to this Pokemon, you now knock out whatever's in your opponent's active, regardless of what it is. Um, you knock them out and then they can't play trainers as well. So you basically, from what I found, uh, if you get that Dark Moon off um, and you're taking a good amount of prices with it, you tend to win because they can't, they just can't really come back unless they develop their board enough to where they can. But um, so yeah, if you manage to get that off, that's our sort of build around uh, Pale Moon, Dark Moon Jack, sorry, is absolutely amazing. Taking, you can just like uptrade into like a Rillaboom, for example. Uh, just do 340 damage, boom, done, doesn't matter. Toxicity, dead, doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, that's a really cool Umbreon Dark Row. Um, for everything else, though, we've got ourselves Mega Sableye Tyranitar. Uh, 210, um, if your opponent's EX or GX is knocked out from this damage from this attack, take one more prize card. So, Dedene equals three prizes. <laughs> Yummy, 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 um, which is always cool. Uh, that's how you. That's sort of typically how you want your games to go. You prize up and you want to take three prizes with Pale Moon, take three prizes with Greedy Crush. That's how you want to sort of go. Um, and obviously, Weavar lets you move around your energy, so you can do that. Uh, jet Attack is actually interesting. I've done it a couple times. Um, five for two fifty. Not bad. I mean, not the most energy efficient, but two fifty is a kind of a cool number. Not Salizations, I guess. But if you have another 5 energy attached, so 10 in total, discard the top 15 cards of your opponent's deck. So that really, if you get that off, you tend to win most games as well. So mainly really just play this so we can take extra prizes on Dedenes and like tag teams that are maybe have taken a hit. But um, Giga Fall can come up as well. The sort of new additions that we play, we'll get into the Greninja Zorua. This is one I never used to play, but what this lets you do... Against um, Dragapult, all right. Uh, you want to try and put all your you want to put all your energies onto a Sableye and uh, and Tyranitar. Say so deal with that. Um, but granted, that takes five energy still. If you haven't really got the ball rolling that much yet, or they haven't um, activated your B strings, we do play B strings in here. Dark Pulse is still a really good uh, option just to give them a slap. <laughs> uh, 30 plus 30 for each dark attach for your Pokemon. Uh, obviously, you times that by two for weakness. You don't need that many to start uh, destroying them, really. And it's still a big beefy boy. They can't actually two-shot uh, Greninja Zoroark without prior damage. 
Uh, Dark Union can come up if they sort of try and get cheeky with your Evo. Um, Dark Union lets you put any two combination of uh, your Dark EX or GX, put them onto the bench. Um, and if they've got one more energy attached, you can put two energies attached to each of them as well. Um, I haven't really used it, but you can use it to get back your Weavals if they try and kill. So Greninja's over. And against other stuff as well, it's just a low energy beat stick. You can just have him slap their active, set up the bench, recharging up, some of that good stuff. Uh, another one of the new additions is one Mewtwo and Mew. Mewtwo and Mew is awesome in the sense that it lets you play one of each of the other attackers. And if they die or get discarded, you can just reuse them with Mewtwo and Mew. Uh, similarly to how you play it like a Welder Mewtwo, you can just pile all the energies onto this. And just pick and choose your attacks when you want. So you can just put all your energy, put fire energy or six energy, do the pale moon. And they're like, lol, okay, what else can we do now? And then you can just discard your Mega Sableye, um, bring up a Dene, and then Greedy Crush, all from the same Mewtwo Mew. Uh, it's actually kind of cool, so um, I think it definitely warrants a spot on the list. While playing four Cherish Balls and four Quick, you can just ping this guy out of nowhere um, and really surprise him. So um, I think it's really worth it. I've used it quite a bit. I'm still a fan of the Naganadel engine just because it lets you get one extra energy per turn with the charging ability. It lets you take one energy from your discard power attached to this Pokemon. It makes your. Um, Zoroa, Greninja, a bit more live. It means you can just burst energy into play as well. Which is always fun. Player 2-2 two, two of that. Um, let's have a look where else we've got. We've got so many Pokemon here. Uh, da, da, da. We are, I've still got the, the Dark Ride Prism as well. Again, for a similar vein. Because we're trying to build up to that 6 energy Pale Moon. Like, you can really just win so many games just off that turn. Like, you'll see in your player's deck, there's, there's, there's going to be the Pale Moon turn. Um, and if you can build to it and you can and you get it off, you tend to win. Dark Ride Prism is another way of doing that. When you bench him, you can attach two Darks from your hand to this Pokemon. Again, we're just bursting energy. Because if we just get energy on the board, Weavile lets us just throw him everyone, all right? Um... And against non Jexoth is actually a decent attacker as well. Fourth for the 120, and they have to flip two coins to wake up from their sleep. If any of them are heads, they stay asleep. So that's kind of cool as well. It lets you um, stall out uh, in uh, alternate wing cons. Um, we play one of the Guzzlord. This is kind of cool because it's another beast ring target. It's a bit more of a fatter beast ring target. So if you have two energies in play and they just care one of your tag teams, you can bench Guzzlord, beast ring to it, get two energies, move them on. And then all of a sudden, now they're staring down a red banquet. Uh, really good against ADP, this is. If they've just GX'd um, and they've took a hit from like a Umbreon, um, Umbreon tag. Not Umbreon tag, sorry, good ninja tag. Uh, all these dark tag teams sound the same in my head. <laughs> and then you can hit them with a Red Banquet after they take four prizes. Again, uh, Red Banquet against all other stuff is just a nice attack to have. Lets you cheat stuff you otherwise wouldn't. Because when you knock something out with this attack, you take an extra prize card. So, um, again, we all know how strong Ultra Creation is. And granted, this isn't across all our Pokemon, but it is just on this. But um, you can still pick stuff off. Um, like I was saying, if you can Night Spear a bench to Dene, you can then bring them up. And KO them with Red Banquet for three prizes. Another way you can cheat prizes. Let's just have a look. Is that all the Pokemon? We play one Ditto, just to act as a Weavile, uh, a Sneasel, sorry, and a Poipole. It's actually worth noting this is definitely the right Sneasel because if you're going second, you can actually attack with this and it lets you discard opponent an energy from your opponent's Pokemon. So against ADP, granted mm -hmm. most of them are now playing this sort of spinner of energy switch version, but uh, this lets you discard that straight away, which is always hella fun. So that looks like that's all the Pokemon there. Let's get on to Dene as well, because we need to draw cards. <laughs> uh, let's get on to the trainer. So if we play four Acrobots, because we need to get energies in the bin for the first so we can get charging up to live. Um, and I just like acro bikes. It's so nice. You know, now that we can't play supporters turn one going second, you know, I mean, we have four outs to the Dene, but just in case we miss them, acro bike lets us dig, 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 lets us find our boss orders, lets us find our great catches as well. So I'm a real big fan of that. Three beast rings, uh, just because since we are playing a Naga route, we can, and beast rings are silly. Like, if the opponent's on three or four prizes, search your deck for two basic energies and attach them to your Ultra Beast, right? That's in, in a deck like this, it lets you just fling energies out of nowhere. It lets you build towards big Giga Pools, lets you build towards Pale Moons, lets you build towards like massive uh, Dark Pulses, and it's insane. You know what? If you wanted to like cut one out, I'm going to four beast rings. Because like, normally you tend to get one off in a game. If you get two off, that means you can literally pull any attack you want out that turn. So um, maybe maybe going to four beast rings. If you want to do something like this, um, I'm not against it. 
Uh, another reason why I love Dark Box so much. So I love decks that you can just always set up and always play the game. Um, and one reason, one thing with Dark Box lets you do that is because you get to play four Cherish Balls. Because literally all your decks still, well, we don't play V Pokemon. All our deck of GX has almost got the you know, got the Tag Teams, got the Weavars, got the Denes, got the Mewtwo. So being able to just have all these outs is just so refreshing. And I love that so much in the deck. If you can just always set up and always play the game. Um, that's a big tick in for me when it comes to a deck and Cherish Balls let you do that. I mentioned uh, four Crit Balls as well. It's because all our deck, apart from Nagnadel, is basic, so we always want to play these. Let's just get energies in the bin as well for charging up. Um, let's have a look what else have we got. Uh, let's talk about We play one Great Catcher. This is just so we can go to uh, Dene hunting a little bit easier. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes we're not going to be able to always play Boss's Orders, so I think having one Great Catcher is fine just for letting us pick up tag teams as well or any sort of GX, really. One Ordinary Rod, just so we can, you know, get back some Pokemon if we need to. Like, let's say we've um, prized Mewtwo and we've got the attackers in the bin. His ordinary wads to put them back in. You could actually cut that in all honesty as well. Maybe cut that to something else. Maybe a switch. Let's have a look. So, um, got two Dark Cities. Dark City is super cool. <laughs> Dark City lets you, all your basic Dark Tops have no retreat. So, like, if you look at some of the cards, like uh, da, 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 Mega Sable Tower, right? With four retreat. All of a sudden, with that stage, it's got no retreat now. <laughs> so, um,. The amount of control you can have over the board if you've got free retreat for your dark type basics and you can move around energy is just insane. So, um, but yeah, let's actually cut that ordinary one now. Um, it's just nuts. So, I'm a huge fan, <laughs> huge fan of Dark City. Two Ultra Space Ultra Space lets you search out your Poi Pole and lets you search out your Naganadels, which is always cool. Um, if you want to sort of go on like a mysterious treasure esque route. You could, um, that gives you more discard synergy, which is always nice. Maybe you could go down to one Ultra Space, pay a couple treasures, cut both Ultra Spaces, pay a couple treasures. That's up to you. I like Ultra Space, though, a little bit of deck thinning. Um, we play two Boss's Orders. Again, just because changing their active is nice. If you want to cut the Great Catcher and go down to three Boss's Orders, I'm not against that either. Uh, we play three Cynthia, just because we need to see as many cards as we can. I'm not really a fan of Marnie. Like I said, we're a semi-consistent deck, but I don't think we're consistent enough to a point where we can play loads of Marnie. So. One Hapu. The reason we play one Hapu is just so this lets us get energies in the bin, hopefully, so we can charge them back up. And let's just, it's a nice little dig, hopefully, so we can see loads of cards and hopefully get the stuff we need. For Professor's Research, just because this card in draw seven is nuts. I remember coming into Sword and Shield, one of the main reasons why I thought Dark Box was sort of coming back on the map was solely because of Professor Research. Some decks just really like this card in draw seven, and this is one of them. And then running out of list is 12 basic energy. So there's actually a couple other ways you can take this list. It's pretty versatile. Um, one way you can play it is um, let's type in Scar Charge. Show not owned. You can play. Come on, where are you? Charge. There we go. You can sort of lean into this Incineroar Jets. What this guy lets you do is once during the turn, you may put three damage counts on this Pokemon. If you do, search your deck for up to three darks and attach them to this Pokemon. And then you've got Crushing Punch, free energy does 150, uh, discards a special energy attached from your opponent's active. And then Darkest Tornado does 50 for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So you can lead into that. It's a strong option. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can either try to evolve up into it. Um, you know, play a Tor account and evolve up. Which I don't really recommend. But you are playing Cherish Ball. So, you know, you have more about to find in Cineroar. Or what some lists really do is lead into that Dark Union. Where you can try and discard the Incineroar nice and early. And then Dark Union it into play. You can do that. But I think Dark Box's sort of biggest utility is those big GX attacks. And I don't really want to build my Dark Box list to have to use Dark Union. I feel as if you win more games with Power Moon than you would with the Incineroar. Could be wrong. It's worth trying. It's not one I've actually played too much of in real life. I'm not going to um, lie to you on that one. I think this one's my favourite. But right, let's get into the games. We actually might get sneaky smash uh, value here, which is kind of cool. Unless I, oh, I wasn't looking, this is our turn. Okay, we're playing against Dragapult. Nice. So we all know what we want to do. We're going to get ourselves a nice T uh, Sable Tar. Very nice. Um, let's 
Let's quick ball away boss's orders. Haha, <laughs> we prized the Zable Tar! Oh, you actually can't write this stuff. You actually can't write this stuff. What an. So funny. <laughs> oh, it's funny, isn't it? Okay, we've got Dark in the bin now. I just think we sneaky smash. That's funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, power plant. Good thing we held that ultra space, huh? <laughs> you genuinely can't write this stuff. Hello, Lana. Interesting. Okay. So, <laughs> get that stage out of the way, please. Um, grab Naga. I guess we'll retreat now. Then we'll evolve. See him having that dragon pulse is like quite, kind of annoying. Um, yeah, we'll do that now. Is Good Lord worth it? I'm not sure. You don't want to bench too much stuff. I'm trying to think, what's actually worth it in this scenario? Tell you what, I'm not actually against... Um, I just miss energy. Uh, I'm not actually against setting up Umbreon Dark right here because of Pell Moon. Do we have Dark in the bin then? Yeah, we do. Okay, so we just need to hit... Let's just thin our deck even more. We just have to hit energy here. And then hopefully we can take a care on this dragon pole. If we don't, it's not the end of the world, like, but. There we go. Okay. Charging up. And shadow connection. Move. Right. Uh, so we want to see tails on this. Yeah, get out! <laughs> Get that weak stuff out of here, please, Sunshine. Dark City's kind of cool. Yeah, he's in a bit of a bother now. He's in a bit of a bother now. Catcher. Who's he going to? That? Probably that, right? He's got a two retreat cost. Oh, no, we can just move energy up, can't we? So, probably did any. Don't know. Okay, that makes sense. <coughs> uh, do, 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 do. Okay, now as a quick one, let's go on to the next one. <laughs> Can't always get a sneaky smash value. Uh, okay, that's okay. I just got scared because I thought dark were weak to grasp. Obviously, these old school ones aren't. <laughs> we have to go over B strings norm, but we do get some energies in the bin, which I'm not mad about. So, uh, we'll bench Poi Pole. We'll touch up here, and we will Dedene, hoik! Get Sneasel, get Ultra Space, and you tell you what, can't really ask for more than that. Cannot ask for more than that, really. So next turn we can evolve up a Naga, get a Charger up. Um, and yeah, uh, kind of scary that that Greninja might die. We might have to sort of really rely on a... Um, Pale Moon. Okay, Trika. Oh, because it's got the ability. Uh, that's kind of cool. Forest Feast. So not a great massive turn from him there. Um, we can still get Kerd next turn, though. He can just go, what? Um, voltage Beat. Attach, attach, KO. Which would be scary. Um, in which case, we need to line up the Pale Moon for that. We need to have six energy in play. Ooh, being so snide would be nice. Okay, so top deck Cherish is kind of cool. This has to grab ourselves Weavile, right? Uh, yep. So always get Weavile. We might even try and KO Weavile. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, we'll Ultra Space now, take a Nagger out of deck. That seems fine. 
we'll attach one. And then we'll simp fear. Yeah, Dark City Beast Ring. Okay, Beast Ring's cool. Because that means we can potentially use our um Umbreon on Dark Cry. Uh Dark City is just basic dark, yeah. So I'm just gonna, if we get knocked out. Uh, we'll charge up first as well. We need to do that. So if we get knocked out. We've got a beast ring as well, and I've got a research. Okay. Um Bin off Naga, we won't need that. Oh, I guess we could have got Ditto. Yikes, that was okay. Um What's your retreat? Okay, we could grab Dark right now. Uh, to get another energy in play. I don't mind that. That's cool. And the next one we can use that as our retreat pivot. Okay. Yeah, that's not a bad... Yeah, we'll take that. Not bad at all. If he has KO, he's got KO. If he KOs this, annoying, but we can, you know... Tuffle Stadium, nice. To be fair, it would even be too hard to carry that after it Mega Revolves anyway. Uh, v Maxes. Gets the Grovar. Oh, nice. So, yeah, that searches Grovar. Grovar searches everything else he needs. Has he got candy? Has he got KO? I think he has. Cynthia. Oh, no, he's going hunting for it. He has to find the candy. Obviously, he's got um, Grovar to find it, so. Netballs only searches for basic. So you can get some Nobuguki maybe. Another Rillaboom VMAX. A loathing egg. Interesting. Is he gonna a load an egg it into play? Wait. You don't play Grovol. Surely you're playing rare candies, right? He can't just rely on the Well we'll find out now, I guess. Uh We'll find out. That's actually a deck. I need to play more Rillaboom Beam. Okay. V Max. Okay. One eighty. We need to find one more energy. Switch. Okay. Okay. So Pearl Moon, I think, is still our play here. When we can't. We want to hold on to that beast ring because we've got rid of one already, haven't we? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I want to hold on to that beast ring. Because what we call oh, it's a four card hand. Hmm. One, two, three. We've got five energies in play. One, two, three, four, five. We haven't attached energy this turn, have we? No. How much damage does this do? 50, you discard for it. Uh, so, so that does KO an Umbreon Darkrai. Do that, see if he has another switch. <clears throat> I don't want to lose that beast room, we're gonna need that. You still got quite a bit to do to get a carry this turn. He carries us, we okay because if we KO with um Pale Moon, we turn off his trainers, right? He has to strong charge here this turn. So like Mallow Land would be the biggest insult. <laughs> we got rid of one boss's orders, no boss's orders. Okay. <clears throat> How much HP that got? 90 left, okay. We seen one switch already? One switch. One switch, one Cynthia. Attaches to active. Voltage beat. Okay. You're gonna do calming hurricane? Trob Cloud's actually really scary. I'm in hurricane. Got 120. So we need to take KO. Um, 
And that seems fine. Now I think we can actually... Uh... Yeah, now we'll grab Umbreon and Darkrai. Put him down. Take the KO. And now we can threaten Pale Moon now. That's the idea. So whatever he puts up in the active, we can just Pale Moon it. That's the idea. We've still got two Beast Rings in deck as well if we try to get fancy with it. And then if he actually um, Shining Vines carries it, we can just grab out our Mewtwo. So, yeah. That's a weak... Is that a weak card? Why would you go into this one? Thinking about it. Well, I guess we actually haven't got an attacker to KO it straight away. So, how many energy are you going to have him play? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so we can just Power Moon next turn. So, yeah, that looks like we wrapped that up. <clears throat> Sonya isn't uh, Marnie. He might as well have Stamp. Let me just make sure before I get ahead of myself here. So, we're going to have one, two, three after Charge Up. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we'll just Power Moon then. Oh, yeah, I have to charge up. We've got to charge up there. Okay. Shame in Rawig. Okay. So, anything that can mess up now is a stamp. Max beating. That's a scary attack. So, yeah, I think that wraps it up, though, no? Hopefully, he doesn't realize what we're, what we're building towards. I don't want him to concede. You don't get big time power moons off, so. <laughs> Right, so charging up. That goes there. That goes there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah. Shadow connection. Yeah, it looks like he's seen it. Hopefully, he doesn't concede. Ah, God damn it! But either way, uh, you can see there, that's like 100% what we build the deck to do, really. Um, just early pressure, early pressure, and then maneuver into a um, Pale Moon to seal it up. And if you can actually, you know, take three prizes with the pressure, or like two prizes with the pressure, the Pale Moon will just seal up games. Um, and that's why having the one Mewtwo in there is kind of cool, just because, you know, if they, um, they see it in a discard pile, I think, okay, well, chances are Pale Moon's not coming back. Um, and you can just fit it with the Mewtwo instead, copying Greedy Crush and all that good stuff as well, always fun. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video, much appreciated, really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't hesitate to subscribe, I try and put out as much stuff here as I can. Full deck profiles plus games, topic conversational pieces regarding anything in the TCG. Um, check out my Twitter, check out my Facebook, that's where you get most of the updates, sort of see what's going on behind the scenes, all that good stuff. Also check out the SoundCloud for the full um, bi-weekly podcast. If you're interested, if you like the conversational pieces, go check that out. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good day.